Hello, hello, everyone. Welcome back to the show. Welcome if you are new. This is High Vibe in It, the show where we help you to live your best life through energy work, healing modalities, manifestation, self love, all that jazz. And today we have a super special guest that I'm actually going to let Lindsay introduce because oh, come she's on. the one who said okay. we have to have this lady on because she's so amazing. And what I will say is that she is the founder of Energy Rise, which is is a really awesome meditation app, but you might also know her from different realms of life. So Lindsay, I'm going to give that to you and then we'll introduce our secret guest. (laughs) I feel like this is a game show now. So uh, I know you, thank you so much for being here from a a very amazing role in one of my favorite shows, The Vikings. And a lot of our audience, maybe uh, a lot of just general people know you as an actress, um, Maude Hurst, everybody. Yay, welcome on the show. <laughs> um, so I'm very curious if if you're willing, you know, first to maybe get into your journey to here, because because this is a little bit of a pivot, right? <laughs> it's not like I'm sure you're still doing everything you love to do, but the the from what from being known as somebody who's in, you know, shows and and projects and movies and things like that to just doing like spirituality is such a you know maybe not so black and white or not so like so far on the spectrum but it is a little bit of a pivot so how did you get from there to here and what was that like um yeah great question so my journey started about three years ago I kind of come out of Vikings and um everything on paper was going like perfectly I kind of I just bought a house with my partner and we were kind of heading in the right direction and very quickly we had I had a horrible breakup had to get out of my house and I felt like there was this crossroads that happened that I kind of had, had the question in my head I could get really depressed by this this could be like a terrible moment but there was something like niggling just saying actually this is an opportunity to ask yourself the question who do I want to be I was just approaching my 30s Um, Like, who do you want to be at this point in your life? What really makes you happy? You suddenly have like a clean slate. So all of those things that I thought were going to make me be happy before, I hadn't actually been happy for a long time. I just hadn't stopped and checked in Uh with myself. In fact, at that time, I didn't even know what checking in with myself meant. I was just on on this like rat race of life and was super busy, super, yeah, just on that kind of really fast pace of life. Well, Um, and on paper, just to interject one sec, it looks like, how could I want anything else? Right. Because you're, you're successful, you're doing great in what you're doing. And then all of that, that you thought was like, well, how could I even ask for anything else becomes like the front question, you know, and, and maybe this isn't what I want to do. Sorry, go ahead. I just think that's so important to say, like all it's all too common for people to be like, how could I, how could I ask for anything else? I I'm supposed to be happy in this, you know? Well, that is it. Exactly. Right. It's like when we're supposed to be happy, we, we set ourselves at a young age, like that path of what we think we're going to do for the rest of our lives. And when we get there, often people describe that they get there and they're not as joyful or happy as they thought they would be in that moment. And that was certainly the case for me. It wasn't that I wasn't appreciative and that I hadn't worked for, you know, 12 years to get there already and loved the experience in many ways. But there was a part of me that didn't feel fully myself. And I realized since then, pivoting into so basically after I went through all of that moment I went to a yoga retreat and started um meeting other people that were kind of asking those same questions and like who am I what makes me happy and and learning meditation and so I decided to do a yoga training um that kind of did start this whole journey of of self-discovery and I realized what I'd done with acting for so many years was cover myself up like it was I was always hiding behind characters and scripts and screens and everything was about Maud playing a character so Helga you know it it was one example of that but it was always even when I wasn't in character as an actor it was almost like that was my identity and I very rarely stood comfortably as Maud anywhere and Mm -hmm. um, so yoga was like this amazing experience where I was being taught how to stand in front of a group of people as me happily confidently and showing myself vulnerably and it was kind of this amazing moment I was like wow this space accepts me as I am Mm. um and I started gaining this inner confidence and and this this ability just to be like wow I can be somebody that does everything I don't have to just be this actor or this one thing that I define myself as when I was I mean I started uh, auditioning when I was 10 years old so it was so much a part of who I thought I was 
and um, to suddenly being like oh I'm Maud who just does a lot of things that I love and and the world and is, that's okay <laughs> and it's fine and it actually it like opens all these doors where we can all try everything and yeah. that's exciting like that that means there's so many more possibilities and we don't have to stay with that one definition and um, so yeah that was kind of the start of my journey and then it's definitely developed since then so mm. I have one more question about the Vikings and I came about uh, <laughs> you do mention in, I think I read it in your Instagram where you say like, you, you sort of feel like that your Vikings journey was the start of your spirituality. Is that, am I, re- did I read that right? Or like, I it could. Of, it, it's interesting because at the time I had no idea. I, I mean, I wasn't going down this path and Helga mm-hmm. definitely is that kind of character. She was just a born spiritual hippie and pagan. And for her, all of this stuff um, was real for her like everything this she lived and breathed all of this stuff and at the time I didn't put two and two together but Mm -hmm. now that I'm on this path I always wonder like was there a seed that was planted there and like was that you know part of me experimenting with Helga's personality and and with that kind of way of life and researching paganism and the importance of the earth and all of the stuff I felt as Helga I was like maybe there was something there that I hadn't realized that I now see and so I think she probably was part of the journey. Well, thank you, Helga. Isn't that so funny how we can look back and be like, oh, that's what that was sometimes, <laughs> but we yeah. never know it in, at the time. It's just, ugh, life is just so funny and awesome. So, anyway, go Maude, ahead. Go. As you're speaking, I'm wondering if you are aware of your human design type, because you sound to me like a manifesting generator, which me and Lindsay are, and manifesting generators love to have their hands in many different cookie jars. Mm-hmm. Are you yeah, familiar? I do, I- and I'm not familiar with it. I have heard that before, but I'm not mm-hmm. familiar, but that sounds very, I mean, I we should do it in the Patreon version and just let her know what she is just for funsies. Oh my gosh. That'd be fun. Okay. <laughs> good idea. Good teaser. So moving on anyway, human design, there's a couple episodes that we did on it where we interviewed people about it. I think you would be intrigued to learn more. There's five mm-hmm. types. Everyone fits into a type and it kind of correlates with the chakra centers and your birthday and how energy moves in your body and things that light you up and how to magnetize opportunities something to dive into later if you're interested but yeah um, great yeah this is great I'm really loving your story tell us a little bit about how meditation has played a huge part in your journey because clearly you're a huge meditation advocate um so talk to us a little bit about that I um, it's funny with meditation when I started learning yoga was like my primary entry point into kind of the mm-hmm. spiritual stuff and um, on my medita- uh, yoga training I, we were meditating a lot and I had this feeling like I was always supposed to meditate like I when I teach yoga I'm aware that I'm teaching I get very much into a flow and I, I very rarely like plan anything but I feel like it's natural but there's something that happens in meditation where I feel like it's what I was always supposed to do. It feels like the words just come out and it's not even me. It's like a channeling yep. moment where every time I do it, I just sit there and I'm like, I know I'm supposed to be doing this. And um, that happened really quickly with meditation for me, actually. And, and I kind of started following it more. And I went to do Vipassana, which is the 10 day silent meditation retreat where you don't talk for 10 days and you meditate for 10 hours a day. It was really extreme. Um but it was just amazing. Like the, uh, the amount that you understand yourself when you sit in silence for that long and the, you start watching all of your behavioral patterns. Um, and again, it starts like giving you this amazing confidence about who you are um, and how you show up in the world. And for me, meditation is this beautiful experience where you can guide people to have a deeper understanding of themselves. Um, mm-hmm. And for me, that's um, it's a gift and it's like a superpower when you, when you know yourself, you then have choice and we live yeah. in our lives and we don't know ourselves most of the time on a deep level. We kind of live at this pretty superficial, I'm fine all the time level. And at that state, so you don't really have much choice. It's almost like you feel life is happening to you. And again, coming back to that whole manifesting, when you get into deep meditation, when you really know yourself, everything's then a choice. It's like, do I want to show up feeling like this today? Or you know what do I want my week to look like in meditation you can kind of choose whereas I think without that I didn't feel in control of my life in that way yeah and it's just another example of stopping and asking stopping for long enough to receive because we never we never really do that we're never taught how to do that imagine if you were taught in primary school just how to sit and just listen to yourself I mean, it's incredible how much we would, how much more empowered we'd feel on a day-to-day basis. 
um, that's really beautiful. I'm glad, I'm glad that you illustrated the amount of discovery that can happen when you allow it. Right. And I always say like, you're never going to sit back one day and regret learning more about yourself or understanding yourself or discovering about yourself. That's just not a thing that you're going to look back and be like, Oh, I wish I didn't do that. <laughs> and, and you know, it is scary. I also see yeah. it from that. There's a lot of, cause I teach all the time. So I'm, I'm seeing hundreds and thousands of people coming through meditation and, and I understand that it's scary and that we mm. don't, you know, not everyone wants to sit with their thoughts for a minute and know, you know, that stuff feels quite daunting, but you get through it and then you realize it, it's it, nothing as scary as the mind makes it out to be actually yeah. the experience is much gentler and much more beautiful than than we fear it's going to be and as you said you never regret once you know more about yourself and once you know yeah you experience the depths where meditation can go it feels like I mean it's beautiful even the even the hard times are beautiful and I loved what you touched on too about the observation piece giving you choice because I always say that like when you have awareness that opens up way more choice points because without mm-hmm. awareness you're operating from some conscious patterns maybe old habits but once you can just zoom out and observe hopefully with compassion and curiosity as opposed to judgment that opens up a lot of doors to be like, okay, well, do I want to keep going down this path or do I want to choose something else? Do I want to think this thought or do I want to choose a more empowering one? And I really feel like a solid meditation practice is such a valuable base for just your life because it gives you that zoom out perspective opportunity to watch yourself and then make new choices if that feels more empowering. A hundred percent. And even if you notice that you are judging yourself, even that's empowering because you're like, wow, I'm mean yeah. to myself. Like in that yeah. moment, like we want to, of course, come in with as much love and compassion. But even at first, if in that moment you're like, the judge, judgment comes in, you're like, wow, I'm really judgment, uh, judging myself all the time. And that's a, that again, an empowering thing to learn about yourself because you realize you can change that. Yeah. That but the empowering yourself. piece. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, that's it. Oh, yeah. So I was going to say the empowering piece comes if you're willing to make the change. Because what I found with a lot of people is if you're not willing to actually make changes to your life, you should not do self-awareness work because it will actually make your life worse rather than better because everything will just become magnified and you'll start to feel trapped. So as long as you're someone who's willing and open to change and willing to change your approach and your views and the actual actions that you take in your daily life, then proceed away with your self-discovery. But if you're like, no, I don't want to make changes, I would recommend stay away. (laughs) Stay where you are. Do not step forward because I noticed with my clients too, like I, I do hypnotherapy and when you become the whole point of hypnosis and meditation and self-discovery in general is you are now aligning with what works for you, where, where you're going, the path that you're on, you're aligning energetically with what is for your highest good. And you're making the choice to do that. And so everything that's in your life now that doesn't fit that will begin to, you'll become hyper aware of like, oh yeah, that's not working. I'm not actually happy in my job or this relationship has been terrible for years. And now I'm recognizing that I don't really want to be here anymore. And it just becomes incompatible with your life. And so I think that kind of illustrates the point of like, if you don't, if you're not ready for it, and of course it's not always the case, but it, it definitely is, is a, is there's a chance that this can happen. You'll just start to be hyper aware that things around you are no longer working for the next level that you're going to. And, you know, you have to be kind of accepting and okay with just letting it fall away yeah for sure but I also think there's a truth in that like I mean people that discover this work are already ready even if they're not sure they're ready right. I think like, <laughs> I think like, there's a reason you're listening. in the place you are and the awareness that you yeah, have and yeah people will be listening and being curious when they're actually ready and, and another thing I say to my clients because I do a lot of quite deep um, energy work as well but is uh, you know people have that fear what can I uncover if I really go in yeah. and we don't sometimes people get scared and actually I, I'm the more and more people I work with, I really believe that the body will not reveal anything that it's not prepared to sit with. And I think like we have to trust that it's the mind that comes up with all these stories that, you know, that's too scary or that's too dark. I can't go there. And actually the body can handle everything. And Mm -hmm. I really believe that, you know, if somebody has gone through something that was quite traumatic in their life or they have to work through a relationship that isn't right anymore, it will happen when they're ready to actually do it and I yeah. really think there is that thing it's like even rather than saying most people don't do this if you're not ready it's like trust that 
if you're even slightly intrigued, there's a reason that you're intrigued and kind of follow it because the body will just give you this like yeah. a little bit and then you catch up a little bit and then you catch up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And we've all had that feeling of like that little, as you said, the little niggle of like, hmm, maybe I should listen to this. And we don't always, and we just go on with our lives and then the niggle gets a little louder and a little louder until you just literally cannot ignore it anymore. Um, and so, you know, I think, I think you're absolutely right. You wouldn't be listening to this episode. You wouldn't be in the space where you are and have the awareness that maybe there is something if you weren't ready to yeah. face whatever comes your way. I think that's a powerful distinction. Yeah. Well, I think what I meant was willingness to change rather than readiness. I feel like if you're any degree ready, like, of course, you're going to be a match to the information that will be helpful. But if you take the information and then you say, you're too scared, (laughs) I'm not willing to do like to make the changes that this information presented me with the opportunity to do, then I've definitely seen that just not be helpful in people's lives because they have all this great information, but what good is the information if you don't put it into action? It's more like take your time with yourself and really pay attention to what is really telling you you're ready or not ready. Is it fear? And if so, that's something to unpack as well. Yeah, so it's something to distinguish between. Something to think about. Yeah, exactly. It's just that inner compass again. <laughs> It all comes yeah. back to Which inner is navigation to connect with when you do a lot of meditation, right? <laughs> totally. That's exactly yeah. what it does. It connects you into your compass and it, it, it stops you living from the mind and it connects you to your body. And what I teach in everything, like my kind of overarching theme through everything I teach is connecting back to the body because that is where the truth lies. That is where our strength lies. And we have like so much wisdom in our bodies, but we live 90% of the time in our minds. Um, and so for me, meditation and yoga and all of it is about coming back to yourself and coming back to your body. I like that approach too, because I think a lot of people like accidentally use spirituality to leave their body and yeah. like as a form of escapism, but really like if you came here to be a person in this 3D realm, like you wanted a body, that's why you're in a body <laughs> and you're here to experience this life in a 3D material way that your body is and connecting to it is so empowering and honestly I feel like connecting to the body creates so much safety in the nervous system which translates into safety in the mind do you experience that with your clients a lot a hundred percent exactly that when you can teach and using breath work as well when you can teach the body that it is safe then the mind catches up and it's all interconnected right there's nothing separate but it's just teaching that like reconnecting people to that whole yeah. 360 experience which is that yeah whenever it, the same thing I'm sure you guys are, we were talking about being like master manifestors and it's the same thing it's allowing the mind to believe where the body goes so you could if you yeah. feel it when you're manifesting in the body like it's already happened the mind believes it's happened and it happens like it's this you know yeah. that's what it is is yeah teaching your body to and your mind to kind of come together and not to work separately and be fighting against mm. each other which which I think a lot of the time we're doing without knowing yeah that's the lie is that it's separate it's so funny because these are truths that we as humans knew we did know this at one point (laughs) we just forgot and i think most of all of our work really is instead of teaching this new concept you know we can all agree that we're really just helping people remember that you've always had this connection you just forgot you've always been able to do this and it's always you know been there but it's just you've been told too many times that it's not real. So you believed it, you know, on a subconscious level. It's just so fascinating. The mind, you know, I I love, I always love that. Yeah. I love, (laughs) I always love that idea of like, we're just remembering and it does feel like that. It's like the more you find out, the more you reconnect to yourself. It's like, Oh, it's easy. If we reconnect, it's not like hard. It gets, it becomes like, Oh, this is what I was always supposed to have been doing. Yeah. It's like childbirth. Sorry. You guys are, you, you've never had children, have you? No, but it is, it's like child. It's like we, we have this ability, but if you've never really experienced it, even though, you know, it's there, you, you can't know how powerful it is. And I think once you experience that, like for me, it was my intro to spirituality was a book. It was a journey of souls by Michael Newton. I will never stop talking about this book. Okay. Go get it. But for me, as I'm reading through these pages, and again, he's a hypnotherapist, hello, which is why I'm sitting here today, changed my whole life. I read the book and I'm like, this is, this is true. This is truth. I felt it. Like what I can imagine people feel 
like when they go to church and feel the deep, deep truth of what's being taught, like that's what I felt. And I think that until you can experience that deep remembering, like, oh yeah, that's what life's about. That's what the truth is. That's what we're here for. I mean, it's just, it's intangible and one of the most powerful feelings I've ever experienced. Um, whatever way you choose to do that, whether it's meditation or journaling or, you know, getting a coach or a hypnotherapy, like I would highly recommend everybody find a way to experience that because until you experience that you're still asleep, I think. Yeah, I think that's definitely, definitely true. And as you said, there's so many different avenues and pathways in there's not one, one way fits all. Um, the ethos behind energy rise, which is like my, it's the meditation app, but I also do a membership as well. Um, is exactly it's making mindfulness accessible to everyone so offering lots of different pathways in whether it's breath work whether it's you know a physical practice whether it's meditation there is something that everyone can do to tap into whatever it is that you look like that flow or that deeper understanding of yourself um yeah and it's finding out what works for you and 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 that's so important so that people don't feel like they try it once and they're like this didn't work i'm out i didn't have experience and that didn't work and it's Uh, so common like we hear it all the time uh with almost everything like well it worked for them what's wrong with me but it's like no 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 you are a unique individual there's so many right perfect ways for you to try and you just you don't have to pigeonhole yourself so I think it's beautiful that we always hammer home how important it is to find your unique blend of spirituality of empowerment of self-love and you know one size as you said does not fit all you got to find your own flavor that's Mm -hmm. the beauty of it I think the flavor everyone's got and your flavors, flavors. <laughs> <laughs> so mod i'm actually curious about some of your personal favorite practices maybe like these days because you know we all go in and out of phases and stuff that works for us at different moments in time but what are some of the breath work or meditation practices that you've been using personally these days that you're just really loving um God, I flip all the time. And mm-hmm. that's, again, the beauty is that when you kind of know what you need daily, it feels for me, it's like I've, I've become intuitive to the point where every day it feels like I need a different practice. Um, like today I did, like halfway through the day, I just felt really unproductive and I was kind of all over the place. And I was like, I need to physically move my body. So I got on my yoga mat and did a really powerful practice for an hour and then sat and manifested and meditated and decided what my next path was for about half an hour after that. Um what I regularly do every day is a morning meditation that for me is the like I can't miss it because that it's the difference between me being together or me being a bit like crazy all day so like that's my practice that I will always do every day there is a meditation in there um and then I also do physical practices are great to shift your energy and one of the things I love I do I teach a movement meditation and it's basically you close your eyes go into meditation put it can be any music that you love and just allow your body to move intuitively. And again, it's that connection back to the body to, to really trusting what your actual body wants to do rather than like dancing or like moving in a particular way. It's like, what does your body just want in this moment? And it makes you, for me, it brings so much joy because it's just like that release of whatever stuck energy there is. It can just like get out through physical movement. Um, so yeah, I'd say they're, they're my three that I play with a lot. And then, um, and then breath work as well lots of like mouth breathing and, and breath work that can connect you really quickly into the body. I love how every time anyone says breath, I have to take a deep breath. Yeah. <laughs> it's, your cue. it's so it's subconscious. Your it's like a yawn. It's like <laughs> you say breath, I'm going to remember to breathe. Um, so what is a way or some ways that you would tell people or that you do tell people to get into if they're just starting day one, I'm going to try to meditate. I don't know how to do it. I feel like I'm going to mess up. What do you, what would you tell them to kind of put them at ease and, and help them begin? Start small is what I always say to people at first, like don't aim for an hour sitting down when you first begin and just get this overwhelm that I'm never going to be able to quiet in the mind Um, start with a five or a 10 minute practice. And a beautiful way to do it is a breath called coherent breathing, where you literally breathe in through the nose for six seconds, out through the nose for six seconds. And that's all you do. You just count the breaths and you stay with the counting of the breath at first. And it balance, um, that particular breath balances your nervous system. So it, it literally balances the parasympathetic and the sympathetic nervous system. So not only are you balancing your breath, your whole body really quickly just gets into a very like deep state um, and just keep repeating it and your mind will wander and then you just bring it back to the breath and to not kind of beat yourself up when the mind wanders and you get distracted with shopping lists or whatever's going on out there. And just to keep doing that for 10 minutes um, and notice, just keep doing that for a few days 
And for me, it's always start small and simple. Who can't yes. remember six seconds? Like for me, the biggest thing is like, I forget directions. I forget instructions so easily. And this is so simple. Like if I can remember this, there's no reason you guys can't start this. <laughs> Come back exactly. to the body, inhale six seconds, exhale six seconds, and then balance. Make some magic in your body. I think that's incredible. We're so go, go, go all the time that it's so funny how stopping just seems so foreign to most people. And I'm one of them. I'm a, I'm very ambitious. I love to-do lists. I have three boys and a husband. And it's like, when am I get, when do I sit? You know? So just finding the time and knowing that it's okay, no matter what you can find 10 minutes, no matter what kind of life you have, find 10, even if it's before bed, you know, I think that if you're just in a comfortable place to just focus on your breathing for 10 minutes a day, it could be life-changing. So if that's where you're starting, today's the day. No, just or like, even no pressure. <laughs> notice just like a couple breaths here and there. If you notice that you're tense or you're going really fast or whatever, something that I found myself doing like intuitively and maybe Maude, you have some scientific explanation of what's going on, but I've been just like taking deep inhales through my nose and then I just go uh-huh. for a long time and just let it vibrate out of my lips. And it feels so good. And I feel like it kind of like, um, like resets the energy in my whole head because I feel like the vibration in my head when I do it. So I'll just do like three, four, five of those and then continue on with my afternoon. If I, I feel believe like, that is a type know. of breath work, isn't it? The the lip movement and doing that. I think it is. There's but not exactly that, but it's like similarly to what you're describing. There's a breath called Brahmari breath, which is like it's called it's like the B breath where you inhale and then you hum and you can either do it with mm. your ears closed and, mm. and, and, and or like cover all of your orifices and then you and then you hum and there is mm. that like vibration that like, it really like your whole body goes into this like bzzz, literally this is the noise mm, and then it, you just, like it resonates through your whole body so it's kind mm. of like that same reset and I do that breath that you were just describing when I teach yoga it's just again an energy release um but you're just balancing, yeah, balancing your nervous system. And particularly when you exhale for longer than you inhale, yeah, it's, re- it's that's like the reset that the body often needs because we're often taking more breath in than we realize. And we're not actually going, <sighs> and that's yeah. what we need like, to get it, like to go, oh, like release. The release feels good to slow things down. Sometimes when mm-hmm. I'm meditating, I'll pause my breath after the release for a while. And I actually notice that when I just wait before I take another inhale that when my breath stops actually my head is like cricket 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 it's like the (laughs) easiest moment for me to not be engaged with thought so I'll breathe in really deep breathe out super deep and then I'll just hold it and it's just like so quiet it's the most quiet I've ever experienced like in my life and it's really funny and then I move and breathe again and it's just really funny to notice like and I would like recommend everyone in the audience podcast audience experimenting with your breath and notice like okay when I breathe like this this is how I notice it feels in my body when I breathe like this this is how I notice it feels is it making me feel more open is it making me feel more relaxed is it making me feel stressed is it making me feel whatever and then you know play around because everyone likes and prefers different things like how we're saying so that's why we like to give a couple different ideas to inspire you guys yeah also if you haven't tried breath work there's like so many incredible teachers out there doing breath work stuff and that is for those who are worried about the mind quieting quietening down and they feel like really busy it's possibly the best entry point because you have something physical to focus on it's a really intense breath for some of the practice and then as you just described it's like you can't help but go into this like like complete and utter like peace because the body is filled with oxygen um, and so you can hold the breath for long periods of time and the mind is just quiet so that's always a really good um, thing to play with as well yes I've been loving it and also the humming thing just to circle back around to Mm -hmm. that a self-soothing practice I found myself doing in recent years that helps me so much is to make like I almost imagine that I'm like a cat and I'll breathe in and then when I breathe out I'll just be like hmm and I just go over and over and over and over and it really (laughs) relaxes my whole nervous system and just makes me feel like safe and cuddly and if you're like laying down and do it or like on the couch and do it it's really self-soothing so another spin-off of a humming technique you guys can try 
but isn't it amazing that like when you connect into intuition your body does do this stuff without mm-hmm. like you no know, it's like I find like if I've done like a movement practice and I'm just in tune my body my hands start like naturally coming into like prayer position and I'm like wow this stuff is obviously there for the of course the ancient wisdom but like your body naturally does a lot of this stuff like yeah like humming like self-soothing soothing with your breath when you get connected back to yourself this stuff is pretty intuitive yeah that's a good point the body knows the body always knows <laughs> Love it. Love it. We love it all. Well, is it time? It's been exactly 40 minutes. Yeah. You want to head over to the Patreon? I'm really good at keeping time. (laughs) Good job. (laughs) Yeah, I think we should. I think we should head over to the Patreon. If you're open, we definitely don't have to do this, but maybe uh, if we have time, um, we could do the human design real quick and maybe even like a quick meditation would be I don't know. I'm just throwing ideas out. Would you guide us through a short one minute thing, Maud, for everyone to try? Yeah, of course. I'll do a couple. Yeah, maybe a couple minutes. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Like a quick, quick, quickie. (laughs) Cool. We like it. Sounds good. Well, you guys, we are going to carry this conversation over to our Patreon. You can listen to it and watch it on video by going to patreon.com slash high vibe. Maud, please tell everyone where they can learn more about you, work with you, find you, all that jazz. So my website is www.energyrise.co.uk. I have a mindful membership where that kind of is always running um, yoga, meditation, healing. I work with VIP one-to-one clients um, and then also have my um, Energy Rise meditation app, which is on the app store. And then find me on Instagram, which is just at Maud Hurst. Yay. Well, thanks for being here today. This was awesome. Hopefully anyone who has been hesitant or maybe a little bit scared or intimidated I guess is the best word by meditation or breath work now you have a couple ideas and entry points and you know could be the best thing you ever tried yeah really really just give it a try there's no harm in trying thank you so much ma this is fabulous I'm so excited I'm gonna be buzzing all day I'm gonna go tell my husband right now he's gonna freak out (laughs) (laughs) you're very welcome I love it (laughs) all right we'll see you guys on the patreon Kelsey anything else um I just want everyone to have a great week and know that we love you and you're being divinely guided and have a fabulous day. Oh, you know what I was going to say, which was interesting. (laughs) This is something I was going to say in the very, very, very beginning of the podcast when we were talking about it. And I don't actually remember what Maud said that triggered this, but it's interesting because I kind of felt like, oh, we were talking about happiness and how it looks different for different people. And you thought you were supposed to be happy with these things, but then you weren't. Okay. So this morning I made a video for my TikTok slash Instagram and I was just pulling a random affirmation from a book that I wrote called Affirmations for Happiness. And the one that came out today was, I don't remember exactly what it was because I channeled them all, but it was something along the lines of like, your happiness can look however you want it to. And like the whole idea of like non-comparison and not shitting on yourself and all that. And I thought when you said that, it was so funny. I was like, is this the theme for the day? Cause it's everywhere. Cause I just pulled that affirmation <laughs> yeah. this morning. And then you were just talking about how oh, the I, thought I should be happy, but I wasn't feeling how I thought I should be. Cause everyone tells me this is how happiness looks, but it really yeah. is individual and true to you. So I just want to say that funny little tidbit before we hung up here. <laughs> I love it. All right, guys. Well, have a great week. Thank you again, Maude. We'll see you all on the Patreon. If you haven't joined yet, just go to patreon.com slash high vibe to get bonus content, exclu- exclusive goodies and, you know, hangouts we do sometimes, all kinds of really, really good stuff in the Patreon. Go over there. We're headed there right now to in- continue the conversation with Maude. It's going to be so fun. See you then. Bye. Bye. Hey there, thanks for watching this video. If you'd like to watch the extended version where you get the full podcast episode in a video format, just go to patreon.com forward slash high vibe. The link is in the description. That's where you can become a supporter of the show, listen to all the episodes via video format, and each week you get extended versions of the show, meaning you get to see the pregame behind the scenes, and also you get an extended interview with whoever we're guesting, or if it's me and Lindsay, we usually pull cards for you guys, fun stuff like that. So go check it out. There's lots of cool goodies, including a free copy of my book, a free audio hypnosis from Lindsay. She's a hypnotherapist. And yeah, we just want to give you all the goods, all the content. So head over to patreon.com forward slash high vibe to become a Patreon. Or if you'd rather listen to the rest of this episode, head over to highvibeinit.com where you'll see all the links to everywhere that it's getting streamed. Click your favorite one and be sure to subscribe so you don't miss an episode. Thanks for Thanks listening. For listening.